You can't be need to be free. Free as a bird. You know a bird you can fly wherever you want to go. So you want to be free as a bird. So here we are not free. We do not get we not we do not get enough food to get, to eat. We do not get enough clothing. We do not get any, to any care at school. We do not get much more comfortable at home. When we when we wake up, we do not get food to eat. We only drink water and go to school. Water does not make us feel happy. Make us feel what? <laughs> But to give us strength to, to learn, it does not give us strength, we need to eat something which gives us strength to, to learn much more in school. So that you need food, too much food, clothing, drugs, and there are not doctors at the, at the hospitals, we need, we need doctors also. And we need teachers, qualified teachers, we need them at schools. And, uh, and the things at, at the shops, they are not... They are not touchable because they are in runs. We are staying with our grandparents. Our par my, my parents died, passed away. They passed away with, 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 by this disease called HIV. So I'm staying with my grandparents. So they, they, they do not get enough money. They do not know how to buy run. They do not know how to, where to get it. So it's, it's, it, it is, it is di difficult to them. So I do not know what to eat at Christmas. So that's all I wanted to say. Between 19 to 26 of December 2008, Civicus World Alliance for Citizen Participation undertook a solidarity mission to Zimbabwe. We spoke to over 100 trade union, church and NGO leaders, as well as with ordinary men, women and children about the humanitarian crisis and the growing violations of basic human rights in Zimbabwe. These are the stories and their appeal for solidarity and support from civil society and from the leaders of South Africa, SADC and the African Union. The systems have collapsed already. Mm -hmm. The local council systems have collapsed. The health delivery system has totally collapsed. Mm -hmm. That's why you've got other United Nations, UNICEF, coming to set up cholera camps, even though people might not want to admit it. It means your system has collapsed. The hospitals are no longer safe places for anyone to go to. Two weeks ago, there's a resident from Mambo who went to Jimocha, uh, to the hospital. She had uh, taken in uh, this red poison. There was no attendance for two hours until she died. The same week, a uh, pregnant woman went to the Mutapa, to Mutapa clinic. She was not attended to. She gave birth to a child, a baby child. And um, the child died, the mother bled to death. There was no, no assistance. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I'm citing examples. If you want to put even the body in the mortuary before the rotted of the bodies, you should pay something like uh, 300 US so that they can agree to take your body. To, just to, to put it in the mortuary? Yes. If you don't have that, you suffer with the body even in the house. No mortuary. From my point of view, I think it has got a problem with refrigerators which are not working. Because there is a friend of mine, the baby passed away about uh, three months ago. And when they took the baby to the mortuary, after two days they had to go and take the baby for burial. And part of the face was eaten by the rats. The capacity is supposed to be, I think, somewhere between 30 and 50. But now it is good to something like it's over 200. Sometimes 150 to 200, whereby bodies are being piled on top of another. Tragically, the crisis in the mortuaries shows that not only does President Mugabe's government not respect the rights of the living, but cares little for the dignity with which Zimbabweans are able to lay to rest their loved ones, especially given the close to 90% unemployment hyperinflation and the collapse of the Zimbabwean currency that has made life intolerable for the overwhelming majority.